Hello, welcome to another video. My name is Michael and today I'm going to be doing a cosplay breakdown of my Doctor Strange cosplay from Marvel's Doctor Strange. Before diving into all of that though, I do want to announce that I now have Wizard Taylor merch. I'm wearing this jacket which has my wand and needle uh, logo on it. Uh, there's lots of different designs in the store which is going to be linked down below. Um, all proceeds from the merch sales go to supporting this channel and allowing us to create more cool stuff like this. So uh, check it out if you want to and really appreciate that. So I must say that Doctor Strange is probably my most difficult, challenging, uh, gut-wrenching project that I've ever done and it was worth it in the end. Um, there are so many details on this costume that capturing them all took a lot of effort, a lot of labor, a lot of pouring over images online and learning a lot of skills along the way that I'm really looking forward to talking about with everyone today. I think what drew me to the Doctor Strange costume in the first place was obviously being a, a, a wizard fan in general. Uh, wizards are really big for me and so if you, if you didn't know that already by just going to our channel. And so when I saw the costume in the film in theaters, I was like, wow, this looks so cool. I mean, like the cloak itself is so dramatic. And then the tunic with all its little details on it. And the more you look at it, the more details there are to find. And so Haley and I in the theater just kind of looked at each other and said, you know what, we're, we're gonna have to try to make this. And we did. And while it was a struggle and while there was a lot of hard stuff um, about it, kind of putting yourself or putting myself through that and learning so much from it and messing up so many times um, really taught me a lot of lessons that I've taken forward into, um, into the current stuff that I'm working on. So Doctor Strange wears this costume in the Marvel's Doctor Strange, the, the first uh, movie that he appears in. Um, then uh, well, Doctor Strange does show up again in um, the second Thor movie, but he's wearing a different costume. He is wearing the Cloak of Levitation, so that doesn't change. But he is wearing a different costume that I haven't made yet. Maybe I'll make sometime. And then um, he brings this costume back for Infinity War and Endgame, which I was really happy about because it's the same tunic. So I didn't have to remake anything. It was the exact same costume, so I was really, really pleased when that that happened like there's my costume he's wearing it again yes uh when he comes back at the end spoiler alert and you know <laughs> saves the day uh at the end of that movie um so i was really really excited to see that um so yeah let's dive in and talk about how we made this so if you're going for a project that's really screen accurate or as screen accurate as you can try to get to which of course you don't have to do um this is just something uh, we wanted to try to make it as screen accurate as we could get it um and so that's by no means a, a requirement of if you want to cosplay dr strange there are so many different Doctor Strange costumes out there from the comics um, and, and the uh, the an animated TV shows. There's action figures with Doctor Strange costumes. You can do whatever you want. Um, but we were really trying to go as screen accurate as we could, as many details from the movie that we could possibly capture. So, um, so the first step to kind of doing that is first you need to collect reference images. Um, we collected um, an entire book of reference images. Um, this is my, my binder um, that has my steps and processes in it for costume contests. Um, but in this, I keep my reference pictures. And so um, inside here, I have an entire stack of reference images that I use to recapture as many details as I possibly could. Um, all kind of printed out here and kept very close to me while I was working on this project so that I could say, this is where this is, this is what this looks like from the real costume. Um, one of the first images we saw was the Entertainment Weekly cover, so I captured that too. And then there's a couple of images from the magazine um, that I grabbed there. Um, I, my favorite kind of reference images to collect are going to be the ones that come from um, when costumes are on display. Anytime in the real world where you can see a costume, it's like that's what it actually looks like. Um, those are going to be your most useful images. Whenever you capture stuff um, directly from the movie, often there's um, a lot of lighting stuff going on. There's lighting on set, there's lighting in post that they add to it, make things darker, make things dimmer, especially in movies like Doctor Strange. Um, the Harry Potter movies do that too. I've heard tons of stuff about Doctor about um, Doctor Who changing the colors. If you're a Doctor Who fan and a cosplay, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, so the the real like if you can find a costume that's going to be on display at a convention or um, like San Diego Comic Con or something like that, um, those are going to be your most useful because people are going to take really good pictures of those display costumes. These are often on display at places in California, um, various uh, movie theaters and stuff because you know all of the industry is over there. Um, so those are often going to be the best ones and those are my favorite. 
So after we collected all the reference images that we could possibly find, I started thinking about um, what are all the layers? What are all the pieces that are gonna have to be made? Um, there's a lot going on on this costume. And uh, so we had to kind of break it down step by step, piece by piece and thinking, what is he wearing here? What is he wearing here? What are the belts? What are all the pieces? What are the armbands? What are all that look like? And kind of just taking it one project at a time. Um, it can become really overwhelming at the beginning when you're thinking like, oh my gosh, I've got so much to do. I've got so much to make. And then, uh, you just got to start somewhere. So uh, uh, what I'm going to be doing is kind of taking, I just put all this on the mannequin. Now I'm going to take it off and show you layer by layer how I made everything. Ta-da! All right, so here we are, the base layer of the costume. So this is going to be the under tunic, the base tunic that he wears underneath all the other layers of the tunic of the costume. Um, so we have a couple of reference images of what this shirt looks like. There's one in particular from him from um, Infinity War where he, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is behind the scenes and he's wearing um, just the, the under tunic without all the other stuff on top of it. Um, so that was kind of helpful just as, as far as showing um, the, the base layer here around the neck, this part here. Um, of course, I didn't make mine exactly like his because I had already made my costume by the time that reference image came out. Um, so what I did here for the base tunic is I used this pattern here, this um, Berta style um, 7525. That is the pattern that I used here. And I used look C, C on the back here to create the tunic. So C had this nice piece here where because the chest piece is really the only thing that's visible. Um, so that's going to be here, um, these layers and these stripes here. And then the rest of it was just um, just just a shirt basically. Um, I use kind of a purple color. His is more like maybe a blue color in the films. It kind of goes back and forth, but um, I, I was really happy with the color of this linen. So um, it turned out really well. We got the linen at an upholstery store. Um, so um, an upholstery, there, there aren't a lot of fabric, like fashion fabric stores where we live, but fortunately there are quite a few um, upholstery fabric stores. And so um, we looked around, um, shopped a lot of different places, trying to find something that we were happy with and we could afford um, because if you're like trying to get screen accurate fabrics and things like that it can get really expensive really fast and we didn't want to spend too much money um, so we found this kind of purple linen and this was really nice and then I just followed the instructions um, from the pattern to create create the tunic um, in the back it's pretty much just a shirt it does have a little pleat here in the back just to add a little bit of room uh, looseness in the back um, it's pretty comfortable and I wear a t-shirt underneath it because I do get very sweaty uh, and so uh, I wanted to kind of protect the costume so I wear a shirt underneath uh, a t-shirt underneath that and then um, his pants, um, I basically just wear um, blue chinos. Um, I want pockets. Um, there aren't, if you like, if you go around and try to buy a, a Doctor Strange uh, costume online, um, they, they don't come with pants like ever. Um, his pants are not really detailed. I do have reference images of what his pants look like from um, behind the scenes pictures, but I didn't really want to make those. He's just wearing some blue pants. They're all covered up by the tunic and the boots anyway. So that's what I wear underneath that. Um, for the details here, I basically took um, some uh, some canvas. This is blue kind of canvas fabric, and I used a um, a stitch on my um, Janome machine to um, to do um, a really close zigzag pattern. Um, this was as close as I could get based on the reference images that I had, and so um, I think they look pretty good all together. And they're just um, just sewn um, just on the edge and then on the inside. Um, I did it a little bit on the inside also, so that if it if the shirt was open, um, like uh, for any reason, um, it would still look the same on the inside. So I didn't want it to just end at the edge um, and then kind of expose that it was kind of a half done thing on there. But yeah, all of these um, are just kind of sewn on just at the end there so they get a flexibility. Um, and yeah, so that's the base layer of the costume. So now let's talk about the over tunic. The over tunic has a lot, a lot, a lot of details on it. Um, so much to look at. The more you look at it, the more details there are to see. Um, so this, uh, we the base is a dark blue linen that we got at a, an upholstery store. Um, we were really excited about it. We got um, a remnant piece. Um, so remnant pieces, whenever like um, industry people, like furniture makers or clothing uh, sellers, they, um, they use a lot of the fabric and use a lot of the roll. And then maybe there's a couple 
couple yards left. Maybe there's five or six yards left that they don't need. Well, they'll sell that to um, a fabric store, an upholstery store, or a, a remnant reseller um, to try to make some money back off that little piece they can't really use. And then people like us, <laughs> cosplayers and other people, get to benefit that because we get kind of more high-end fabrics for cheaper. Um, so we are fortunate to be able to find this blue um, linen at a place like that. Um, it had a couple, like uh, some stains on it. I just worked around it and just those, those went in the garbage. And, uh, and then we got to use the rest for this tunic. Um, so in order to make the tunic, um, I was still kind of inexperienced at sewing kind of um, at the time that I made this. And so I really wanted a base pattern to start with. Fortunately, McCall's put out a uh, Doctor Strange similar um, pattern uh, around the time that the Doctor Strange movie came out. And so this is McCall's MP555. Um, that is the uh, kind of Doctor Strange similar pattern um, that, that I use as the base for this one. Um, now it is not exactly the same. This is not, uh, it doesn't capture all of the details that are in the movie costume, uh, but it is a fantastic place to start. And I highly recommend this pattern if you're going to make a Doctor Strange costume. Please start with this. And then um, I'm gonna show you how, uh, or what changes and alterations I made from there. But this is extremely useful. Um, some things that didn't quite get right. Um, so the pleats along the shoulders here, um, the pleats along this top, they have their pleats spread out to just about the end of the shoulder. In the movie, the pleats really do come more towards the neck and then wrap around the back of the neck. And so I did have to change that from the pattern. Um, it's it's kind of hard to describe exactly how I did because I can't really remember how I did it. But what I did was just basically take um, a, a piece of linen um, and kind of connect it to the top of all the pleats um, on each side. So it was like a really wide rectangle that I pleated down and then connected to the pleats on each side of the shoulders and then kind of pleated it and bunched it up here in the back. So that um, so all of these are individual pleats here. And uh, doing it this way, I could kind of bring all the, piece, the pieces to the back of the neck, which is really where it's more focused, um, and make it more screen accurate that way. Um, so it didn't quite get that part right, but the rest of it was extremely helpful. Um, I, the, especially this part here, um, this long pleated piece. So this is kind of just decorative. <laughs> it's completely useless. And um, whenever I was researching this costume and thinking, so, so where does this connect like these pleats and these pleats these they don't talk to each other they're completely different pieces of the costume this uh ends here at the middle and then this kind of juts out here to the side um so it's completely decorative and it it, it does not connect here um and so the pattern did get that right um the pattern's got it over here to the side and then I also did make a couple of changes to the um, kind of the shape of the neckband um, because I wanted to add all of the embroidery over it like it is in the film. Um, so that I did need to change. Um, and then at the bottom, um, I only had a couple reference pictures of what the bottom of the robe looks like. And so I just kind of made some pleats at the bottom. Um, these aren't exactly screen accurate, but um, they do capture the layering details enough to where I was happy with it. So that's what I did there. A couple of other details I wanted to point out are that um, the shoulder stitching details um, are here. And so these I based off of um, behind the scenes reference images that I'll tag here also. Um, they, they have a, a mix of straight and angled lines. It kind of changes direction. Um, so I wanted to try to capture that detail as much as I could. Um, there's really only one or two scenes in the entire film where you can see the back of the tunic. And so um, I did, I did try to capture those details as best I could um, just using a, um, a very close zigzag stitch to create kind of that depth. Um, and I used Taylor chalk to draw out the shape onto the back and then just kind of stitched over that um, in my machine. To fasten it, um, uh, we placed two hooks, and so you can kind of see those here. Um, two hook and eye here, kind of thicker hooks, so that it would um, really latch on there and have the strength needed to keep this closed all day at a convention. Um, and on the inside, you can see that it is lined. Um, and I just kind of hand stitched uh, and hand uh, uh, just a, a stitch all the way along to keep all of that closed. Um, this took a lot of experimentation to figure out where the hooks needed to be in order to keep it closed enough um, because it's just closed enough to where like you can't 
it, it would kind of look weird if it was super open like this in the chest and then too tight it looks sewn together it does cover up a lot of the detail work that i did but you know that's just how it goes <laughs> sometimes is you do all the work and then you cover it up because uh that's just what the costume looks like um, across the chest here, we see the, um, the kind of, uh, the onk shape, um, it, it's really hard to see in the film, but there are behind the scenes pictures that you can see, and I tried to replicate that detail as much as I could, um, across the pleats. This also helped keep the pleats down, which was really good, keep them flat so they wouldn't be flat, uh, going all over the place. I did also hand tack down the, um, the pleats here, so underneath here, there's a very wide stitch where I just kind of captured one layer and then sewed down to the next one and then went up and down like that uh, in between the two layers so there wouldn't be any top stitching but still all the pleats would stay flat because you can iron that but if you're wearing this all day at a convention that it's gonna come up and start getting bunched up in the belts and I didn't want that to happen so um, this was really helpful to kind of hand tack down those um, in between the layers um, and then um, as far as the embroidery along the neck goes, um, that was a lot of work. Uh, I used a machine stitch. I know that some cosplayers have actually uh, hand stitched the X's, the X shapes. Um, it's tiny X shapes all the way along the collar and then across the chest. Um, my machine, my Janome machine has a X shape. And so I basically did a lot of experiments to get the sizing right. And then we really carefully studied the, the color transitions and we do have reference images of those. So the, the, the the patterns kind of change colors mid line like it does not just green all the way down it's green and then stops and then it's blue um and it's just a lot of color and a lot of texture going on which um was honestly kind of fun to replicate because i would just look at the picture and then say okay this is where it changes i would draw lines in the reference picture i would draw lines in taylor's chalk on my tunic and um and then switch switch the the, the color like it was in the film um, then also there are gaps, so there's weathering, uh, where I had to then go back and take out some of the stitches because there are gaps, um, where this is supposed to be like an old piece, an old wizard, sorcerer supreme piece, um, that has been through, uh, many, uh, maybe failed potion experiments and things like that. So, um, it does have some stuff missing, so then I had to go back and, and take out some of the stitches. Um, but that's again, just searching for screen accuracy as close as I could get to those details. Um, um, but yeah, I'm really happy with it. Um, it's, it's fully lined and everything, so protected all those stitches on the inside. And uh, yeah, so that is the, uh, the tunic. Next, we're going to talk about the belts. So um, the belts of the Doctor Strange costume, he does wear several belts. Again, just details and details and details that uh, aren't necessarily like functionally necessary. Um, how many belts do you actually need? But he does wear about four different belts. And so um, we sought to recreate those as best we could also. Um, I'll start with the first one here just because it's on the, the top of my pile. Um, and so this is kind of the scale belt. Um, what we did here was we took kind of just a strip of vinyl, just a scrap piece of vinyl that we had uh, in our craft room already. And then Haley cut out all of these um, these triangle scales out of foam. Um, so these were all yellow foam and then we uh, painted over that with black paint. Um, some of the yellow is actually poking through so I need to touch that up. Um, so yeah we covered all uh, with black paint to do the scales. Um, it's held together with velcro. Um, so there's a piece of velcro on each side so that goes around and um, goes around on the belt here. The D-clips, um, so the D-clips, he, I believe, uses at some point, uh, um, maybe to hold some sling rings, um, the sling rings that he uses to, to travel across space. Um, the sling rings are held on these D-rings. Um, I designed the D-rings in Tinkercad. Um, it was the first 3D printed thing I'd ever designed before. And then um, I got them 3D printed. And so um, those pieces are 3D printed. I believe you can just buy metal D-rings. Um, it's a pretty common um, uh, item, maybe at a, at a, um, a, a hardware store or something like that. Um, but I just wanted to make it my own. <laughs> and then we painted those uh, gold with just some gold paint. Um, yeah, so that's, that's that belt. This piece, um, this belt here, so we kind of call this the Benedict Cumberbund, uh, <laughs> because, uh, it's a pretty thick piece. Um, the inside is leathers. So these are just, um, I get leather scraps that we got at a, um, an upholstery store, just little pieces of leather. And, um, we can see on the inside here that they're numbered. Um, we had all the pieces. So this belt was pretty detailed. Um, and we just, we use reference pictures, um, to see like, okay, so there's a seam, um, there's a seam on the edge here, and then there's another piece. And then 
then there's another piece and it's all just kind of mismatched together. Um, so Haley did all of this work. Um, she cut out the pieces. She did the um, the, uh, the the kind of edging on, on each side. And then um, all of these are just layered pieces of, of, of leather that then she um, used uh, brown paint, uh, brown leather paint, Angela's leather paint, and a little bit of gold. There's a little bit of gold fleck in there. Um, and uh, again, it's held together with um, Velcro, so we put a kind of a V um, Velcro shaped piece there so that um, we could hold that on. Um, there's also a couple of sling ring um, things on on this belt. So that one was a woven um, a woven cording that he keeps here. This is very unsecure. Um, I, I have lost several sling rings actually at conventions because I'll put them on this to kind of replicate the movie and then they've fallen off and I've lost I've lost about I think two different sling rings um I was kind of sad about that so I wouldn't really recommend uh, putting your sling ring on something like this unless you're going to tie it on there and not actually use your sling ring at conventions uh so <laughs> that, that's not a very secure it's just kind of tied on there in a little loop um then kind of uh going under and through that belt is another belt and uh so this one is a woven belt um we got this at goodwill just a, a belt that was just at goodwill and then wrapped a um, kind of faux leather vinyl along the back of that um Haley did all of that as well and glued it on um we then use these these bolts these kind of screw on bolts um to go through this side and then it attaches with velcro uh here we go attaches with velcro underneath here so when we put it on the dress form here um this one goes over yeah and so then um this belt then loops over and around and then attaches with velcro underneath there so um looks a little different on the dress form that it does on me um but yeah so that's basically where that goes there then there's a last belt um this last belt was this is another kind of big project for us to work on Haley did really well um and and made the, the majority of this belt um so again um so these were just belts um this is like webbing from um a craft store or something just a woven belt piece that you can buy um we got a couple yards of it and then so, th so there's one piece that then is has a little dangly piece <laughs> underneath it again just details 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 so many details um so what we did with this piece is that we uh again looking at reference images um there's some metal bands that kind of are, are like textured kind of uh bashed up little metal pieces that are along there um so again you just we looked at the reference picture and said okay how are we going to make that um so we choose uh, strips of craft metal from a craft store and just kind of wrapped it around uh put e6000 uh, e on the back so that um, it would stick on and then um there were a couple of like really intricately designed kind of arcane sanskrit something something i don't know um uh uh, pieces on the belt. Um, so these were 3D printed based off of designs um, that were provided on the Replica Prop Forum. Um, the Replica Prop Forum was a, a huge resource to me uh, through building this costume because people uh, would post reference images, um, they would post like 3D print designs that they use. So um, both of these um, I got uh, linked through the Replica Prop Forum and are available on Thingiverse. Um, Thingiverse is a fantastic website and it has free 3D print files that you can download um, and either if you have a 3D printer, you can do it, or if you know someone who has a 3D printer, if your library maybe has a makerspace, um, you can go to your makerspace and get these 3D printed there. That's actually what I did. Uh, I didn't own a 3D printer at the time and so got these made at uh, my library's makerspace. So that was pretty cool. Use a library. And uh, so yeah, Haley, again, um, just looking at reference pictures, trying to copy the um, references as much as possible. Um, this was like some waxed cording that she sewed into the bottom. We kind of unraveled this, uh, painted it all brown. Um, this piece here, the center piece has all of these cording. Again, some of them is completely decorative. It's just there to, to look pretty. It does this, this cording serves no purpose whatsoever. <laughs> it's just there to look good. Um, and then also the one picture I have of the back of Dr. Strange's costume, um, you do see also that he has another ring in the back of this. So we put another ring back there. Um, probably need to add some cording to it someday, but I think we were in con crunch mode and never actually got around to putting the cording on the back piece. Um, and again, that's just held on with Velcro. And so when you put it on, we complete the look by layering all of these belts together um, 
all along the middle. So I think it comes up to what, five belts? One, two, three, four, five belts. <laughs> How many belts do wizards need? Uh, he's only carrying like one or two uh, 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 sling rings, but uh, but there you go. That's, that's, that's Dr. Strange for you. Speaking of sling rings, um, I also have two sling rings that I still have that I haven't lost. Um, again, these were from Thingiverse. Uh, you can just search sling ring on Thingiverse and they'll probably pop up. Um, so I 3D printed these at the library makerspace also. So um, sometimes, so if I don't lose them, um, I'll have these kind of attached to the belt in some way or I'll have them in my pocket so that for pictures I could pull it out, um, pose for pictures and stuff. Um, but yeah, they, there's a, a couple of different designs of sling rings. Um, my thinner one, my favorite one is the one that fell off of, of my belt. So I've lost that one. So I need to replace it. But, um, but yeah, these are pretty good um, and they look great for pictures, the gold and everything. Um, it, it works pretty well. So got two sling rings there. Doctor Strange also has um, some cuffs on the ends of his sleeves that uh, again are, I guess, protect, I don't know what kind of function they serve, but anyway, uh, lots of layering, lots of details on those. And so I have those two pieces here. Um, so again, we looked at the reference images, the best ones that we could find, and what we did was um, just take as many trims that we could, we just went down the aisle at the craft store and said, that looks good, that looks good, that looks good. And uh, picked all of those out and layered those on here. This on the back is um, some uh, more of the, um, the blue linen as the base. And then we flipped it around and it's just a lot of texture. It's got webbing, it's got just like a kind of ribbon, woven ribbon. Um, I think these were denim. These uh, these were denim bias tape, um, and then there's uh, cording that Haley wove together, and then additional cording. It's just layer after layer after layer of details, and we just tried to replicate those as best we could. Um, then I sewed the um, the uh, Velcro on so that they would stay on my arm, and um, I think they turned out really great. Um, so yeah, they're. That, that's kind of what it looks like, um, of course, when it's on me. Um, and there's two on each side. And so I usually have to lay down one arm at a table and kind of do this if I'm trying to do this by myself. Uh, but usually Haley's there to help me. So it's nice to have a handler when you have a complicated costume like this. Um, so we'll put those on and then I'll be ready to go. But this point is when I'll add a couple other details. Um, one is going to be my watch. And so um, Doctor Strange in the movie, um, he kind of the one uh, relic from his past is that he has uh, kind of one of his really expensive watches and it gets broken um, and it's a really low moment for him um, but he keeps it kind of as a reminder of who he is and that he's broken but he's also whole and everything so what I did was uh, we just found a, um, a kind of similar this is not like a designer thousand dollar watch or anything I um, just found something similar knockoff thing on eBay I think this was maybe $12 um, my glass has actually fallen out, so this is kind of another thing that I need to replace. Um, when you wear a costume a lot, some of your props maybe get worn out. But um, what I did was I just took a hammer and just uh, tapped a couple times until I shattered the, the face of the glass. Um, it shattered enough that it wasn't like completely shattered. Of course, now it's completely shattered. But um, at the time when I made it, um, it was uh, just a little bit shattered and so it looked broken and everything so I would wear that um, uh, uh, beside the wrist cuff to add that extra level of detail and then um, I put clear nail polish over the, 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 the glass so that it wouldn't like pick on anything or scrape or hurt me <laughs> or anybody else. I wouldn't want that to happen. Um, so yeah, it's something I need to replace but if you want to add that extra level of detail, you know that is something that he wears in the movie so I wanted to replicate that. At this point, I'll also do um, the makeup for the uh, for the um, the scarring that he has. So, um, big piece of the costume and big piece of the film is that he's a surgeon and um, he's in a car accident, and his hands are just. Uh, crushed under the the hood of the car and so he can't operate anymore which is why he goes on his adventure um, to learn how to heal his hands and so I'm um, in the in the film um, he does have uh, a lot of scars on his hands and those are there for the entire film so what I use is um, is this palette which has seen a lot of use um, over the years as Dr. Strange um, it's an activate an alcohol activated makeup um, acti alcohol activated makeup is um, really great for conventions because um, unlike usual makeup that maybe water activated makeup um 
I sweat a lot. I sweat a lot in this costume and um, my hands are going in and out of my pockets. Um, I'm doing stuff with my hands. I'm eating and washing my hands throughout the day. Alcohol activated makeup does not come off with water. Um, it's alcohol activated. And so um, rubbing alcohol or icy purple alcohol is what's used to actually make it um, uh, make it activate um, so it'll stick on your hand. So my scars stay on my hand all day. Um, they do not rub off. They do not go anywhere. And then um, when I'm taking off my costume at the end of the day, um, I just take a little bit of that alcohol with a sponge and it comes right off. It's amazing. This stuff is so good. Um, I haven't ever done where, um, like in the movie, he, you know, he sustains a couple injuries and he's got some cuts on his face. I've seen other cosplayers do that, um, but I've never really put anything on my face. Um, but I do uh, scar my hands. And so um, Haley, I just put my hands down and say, okay, I'm ready for my, my scars. I'll put my hands out and Haley will um, just take a simple paintbrush a uh, fine point paintbrush and just um, kind of draw on the the, the, the scars there. Um, she'll, I'll maybe like flex my hands um, so that she can see kind of the bones in my hands and um, she'll draw on those lines. She um, layers it up with like a dark brown, then a red, then a pink. Um, as healed scars really do look more pink rather than like brown and bloody. We don't want them to look like they're oozing blood or anything. Uh, they're, they're older scars. And so um, we kind of go more pink with it. We'll also use um, rigid collodion and so rigid collodion this little bottle here um, is applied with a with like a fingernail polish brush rigid collodion is really cool Ooh, it smells <laughs> it smells so strong even just cracking the lid like that I was like oh it smells uh, when it's wet it, it smells a lot so um, I, I've used it to like scar an eye before my eye watered so much because there's a very strong alcohol smell with it um, but uh, but yeah I, I do a Harry Potter scar with this stuff um, but it's really cool because you put it on wet and then as it dries it shrinks and so it makes your skin look scarred um, because you know when scars heal you're kind of your skin's coming together and it, it's so um so rigid collodion plus the alcohol activated um makeup i'll put um, associate links down to those in the description below so if you want to check those out you can get them on amazon and uh be good to go there and then at this point i'll usually do my hair so um dr strange you know he has a pretty uh, iconic look there um i do tend to keep my my hair kind of in a way that I could do this right now it's a little short so I probably wouldn't do Doctor Strange right now but I uh grow it out if I was going to a convention and wanted to look as close as I could to his hair. Um, so, uh, but on the sides, so I'll use Mayron Hair White. Um, what I'll do is I'll just take a little bit of this in my fingertips and I'll just kind of just push it into the um, the uh, the sides there and just kind of comb that out. And um, so it looks more natural like this, the, the sides of my hair are just white. So he's it's pretty iconic that he's got those white pieces there. So um, this washes out really easily. It lasts all day um, as long as I don't like mess with it and touch it a lot um this this may run stuff stays in pretty much all day so that's what i use to um wipe my hair and then before i put on the cloak the last thing is going to be my boots and so um my boots these are military boots um we got these at a military surplus store and um, they were ten dollars so pretty good deal um they're really not all that screen accurate um we uh the the marvel movies um have a pretty good habit of um frankensteining shoes together and so they will cut the piece off of the bottom like sketchers and other like name brand shoes um they'll cut the bottoms off those and then sew them or glue them or however you make shoes onto um kind of the, the hero boot the the styled boot um so like dr strange's boots you, you can't just like go somewhere and buy them they were custom made for the movie um um, so, and people have made really good replicas. Um, I haven't really spent the money to do that yet because, you know, I'm happy with these boots. I think they look great. Um, we just put the, um, the kind of the webbing on there and then some tassels in the back to, to replicate that. Um, his come up like almost to his knee. Um, but, you know, these, these are great for my purposes. People aren't really looking at the boots. So, you know, I haven't really spent the money to do that because I, I can't make that myself. That's not a skill that I have. Um, so these work great. Um, if you wanted to check out, you know, there are other sellers that do Doctor Strange boots boots. So um, if I were going to really go for that, maybe that's something I'll do in the future, but these work fine. So we're happy with that. Hi, so this is future Michael uh, coming in, uh, having already recorded this video. I'm realizing now that this is getting a little long and I think what we're going to do is actually split it up into two parts. So uh, first part is going to be the first part of the costume. Second part is going to be part two. So uh, we're going to be posting that soon. So stick around. I'm the wizard tailor on Instagram. You can follow me there for lots more details of this costume and the other things that I make. Thank you so much for watching. Keep the magic alive and we'll see you later. Bye.